today I'm going to talk to you about some work that we've been doing uh, on making it easier for practitioners to find or build and or use high performance mathematical software. And uh, this is joint work with a grad student here named Pate Motter and with our collaborators at, uh, at the University of Oregon, uh, Professor Boyana Norris and her PhD student, Kanika Sood. And we've had a big number of um, undergrad and master's students working on this project along the way. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the difficulties um, of using mathematical software, of finding the right mathematical software, and then I'm going to tell you about this uh, solution that, that all of us have been working on uh, called the Lighthouse Project, and so more on Lighthouse in a moment. And the title said mathematical software, but uh, given the time constraints, we'll just focus on linear algebra throughout. So linear algebra turns out to be the dominant cost in a big variety of applications in science and engineering. Um, it, it's behind you know, almost everything in the, in the building world. Um, so if you're ever up in the very tippy top of a tall building on a super windy day, which I know you have in Australia, you'll feel the building swaying back and forth. And it's careful linear algebra calculations that ensure that the building doesn't fall down as a result of that. Um, and similarly, uh, you know, airplanes stay in the sky due to linear algebra, and we have a lot of linear algebra and climate modeling applications, and so uh, at any rate, it, it's a really um, important area of mathematics and a big variety of applications, um, it, and it also, those uh, uh, computations are really quite expensive. So it, it's, a, it's an area of math that people in the computing world care about. Now, um, if you have a linear algebra problem to solve and you want to solve it on your computer, there are a couple of big issues. The first is that it, it's not easy to get the right answer. And so uh, learning how to write the numerical software to solve these problems it, it is really, you know, it, it's it's, it's a big job. And so, um, you know, if, if you're somebody who isn't really, really involved in, in the writing of these kind of codes, your code probably isn't going to work all that well. Uh, but then suppose that you figured out how to get the right answer in your code. The other thing that you care about is how long you're going to be sitting there in the chair waiting for the answer. And so we care a lot about tuning these codes to get good performance. Um, in numerical applications, it's really not unusual uh, to, to have performances at 10% or less of the best that we could possibly get. So, um, you know, the, the tuning picture is a little bit grim. But at any rate, let's sort of talk a little more about this process. Suppose that you're a scientist or engineer and you have a linear algebra problem. Well, it, it's probable that you have some ideas about algorithms that would be good to solve them. But as I mentioned, it's, it's very difficult to, to program those so that they get the right answer. Um, and so, you know, you, you might be willing to invest all that you need to, to get that code to work, but you might really prefer to go out and find software that's written by somebody else. And we'll see shortly that even that is, is not a totally easy thing. And so then once you've got your linear algebra all programmed up, you have to sit down and get it inserted into your application codes, and, and that turns out to be kind of a, a tedious process um, and maybe not the most interesting part of it, but something that, that you need to do if you're going to use that code you wrote. And then finally, we have the tuning case. And there are sort of three basic ways that people go about tuning these sorts of codes. There are some people who are super duper good at getting in and manually optimizing the, these codes. These are people who know a lot about how to write machine code um, and, and they get in and, and make sure that everything is working exactly like you want it to work. Um, but most of us aren't really like that and so we will head instead to tuned libraries that were written by people who know what they're doing. Okay, or, you know, we might be the kind of people who know a lot about some of the tools that can be used to, to, um, to optimize such codes. Uh, linear algebra uh, algorithms tend to be loop-based, and there's a big collection of compiler-based tools that, that can go in and, and optimize those, those loop-level um, computations. But, you know, all of these 
require a certain amount of care and you know knowledge about how things operate okay and so what we see is that if you're somebody who, who needs these codes you're going to have to know a whole lot of different sorts of computer science you'll have to know some things about numerical computation that's the part about translating that algorithm in, in, into um, something that's going to run on the computer and it, it's closely linked in with having some knowledge about mathematical software um, you'll also need to know some things about compilers because you'll want to know what the compilers are going to do to this code that you put together. And you're probably going to need to know some things about computer architecture to get the tuning carried out well. And, you know, it really is the case that, you know, most computer scientists don't have knowledge across all of those areas, but, but almost certainly the scientists or engineers who need these kind of computations don't. So, um, we're going to be trying to look at some solutions to this, and as I mentioned before, uh, turning to libraries of codes turns out not to be a wholly easy answer to the problem. And so, you know, the, the problem is this. There are lots and lots of tools out there to help you in translating algorithms into software and then ultimately into tuning this, but it, it's just a horrendous mess of of software. So when you start to get into the software world looking for those tools, you'll decide that it looks like this picture here. And there are some taxonomies out there that should help people identify the software solutions, but it turns out that those taxonomies are simply interfaces to the software packages and routines, um, and they don't give you very much information about how to use them. But even the interface to these is problematic. And so let's, let's have a look. So the very oldest taxonomy of mathematical software is something called NetLib, uh, which is housed at the University of Tennessee. And um, it uh, is a huge collection of mathematical software. And it, you know, it has some search capabilities. And so let's suppose that I was interested in solving a linear system. So I go to NetLib. And I go to the search box and I, I type in linear system, hoping to find some software to help me solve a problem like that. Well, here are what I get back. Okay, so the first bunch of things are some tech reports um, from various locations. And uh, there's an article from the ACM's Tom's Journal, um, but you know, I don't know that I want to get in and read all that stuff to learn out about my problem. And so I keep on looking down my list of, of things that were returned. And finally, when I get to number 34 in, in the search results, there is the LA Pack package. And LA Pack is a package of routines designed to solve linear algebra problems when the mat matrices are dense. That is, they don't have very many zeros in them. And um, this, you know, this is a fine thing to return, but LA Pack contains thousands and thousands of routines, and so, you know, it it's not immediately helpful to me because I'm going to have to get in and navigate through LA Pack, and and we'll have a look in a minute at, at what that involves. Um, but when I finally get down here to to number 52 in the things that were returned in my search, I, I finally get a system solver. And it turns out to be from the C version of LA Pack. LA Pack was written in Fortran. Um, and it turns out to be a routine for complex numbers, but you know, maybe, maybe I'm okay with this. But when I get in and I click on that link that was there, I look what I get. It, it wasn't found. Okay, so I looked through 22 pages of search results from NetLib, and I never did get a system solver. So I, I was kind of unhappy about NetLib, and so I, I turned to something else. And, and this other option is something called Freely Available Software for Linear Algebra on the Web. And this is just a little piece of the, of the Freely Available Software matrix, but you can see it's a big complicated thing. And uh, over there on the left-hand side is a collection of, of packages that can help me solve linear algebra problems. Um, and all across the right is a whole bunch of check boxes for various properties that these packages have. So I, I have to learn some stuff just in order to read this. But then again, on the left-hand side, what I'm getting is packages. I'm not getting the single routine that I set out to find to help me solve that linear system. Okay. 
And so now I'm going to turn to another package, which is uh, from the National Institute for Standards and Technology called the Guide to Available Mathematical Software, and it gets abbreviated as GAMS. And GAMS has some search capabilities, and so I got into the GAMS search, and I searched on linear system, and, it, and I got nothing. So then I thought, well, I'll try solve system, because that's really what I'm trying to do. And again, nothing was returned. And this is sort of a puzzle, because GAMS certainly includes a lot of linear algebra software. But I thought, well, I'm just going to go right to the basics, and I'll search linear equation, and again, no matches. So th there were faults with the search capabilities of GAMS. And there used to be a Java front end to GAMS called Hot GAMS, and, and it's defunct now, but it's here in this talk. And um, it, it, it made it easier to search, and it turned out that it gave some, um, some you know, better results than just the basic GAMS search. And so I went into GAMS, and I, I searched on linear system, and then I had to click through lots of things, and I had to make some choices, and at the very end, one of the results I got was a pointer to scale APAC. That's the parallel version of LAPAC. So again, a great big package, this time of parallel routines. Or if I made some other choices, I got down to a listing that had 100 routines, some of which I cared about and some of which I didn't. But that same broken CLAPAC link that, that we came upon before was there in that list of searches. So you can kind of see all three of these rep re represent taxonomies of mathematical software, um, but they leave some things to be desired. Okay, so let's suppose that I managed via one of these taxonomies to find myself to the right, to a, a routine that looked like it was gonna make sense. I, but I'm, I'm not somebody who knows a whole lot of stuff about these kind of routines, so I would like to get some information. And so here, I managed to get to a routine to factor a matrix into its LU factors um, using the GAM search. Okay, I forced it to give me this answer. But here is what it told me about how to use that routine that it returned to me. And it was a, a routine from LAPAC. Uh -huh. and, and here's the answer. Computes an LU factorization of a real general matrix using partial pivoting with. Okay, so it just stops mid-word, and so I, I'll say that this wasn't really very helpful to me in explaining to me what this routine did, and, you know, if I was really smart about LAPAC, I would understand how to decode that name, D-G-E-T-R-F, but I haven't spent the time to learn that, so there I'm, I'm just left up a creek. Okay, now I mentioned that, you know, in, with NetLib, we, we got that link to the LAPAC package, which is that package of thousands and thousands of routines for linear algebra problems. And so I decided I would click on that link, and, and here's what I ended up with. This is just the top set of routines in a list of thousands. And, um, you know, we, we get a little bit lucky here because right at the very top of our list, there's a, a routine for solving a general system of linear equations, so we can go away happy. But suppose that I instead had wanted to solve an eigenvalue problem, the answer would have been down there at number, you know, 1767, and I would have been forced to just read all of this stuff or do some kind of lucky searches to, to find what I was looking for. So again, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a clumsy interface. So we knew about all of this, and so now it was quite a long time ago. In 1998, I worked with a, a team of students in our user-centered design course here, and I, I, could, I told them, you know, this, this NetLib, it, it's such a potentially uh, useful, or I'm sorry, LAPAC is, is such a useful package, but it has these thousands and thousands of routines, and I have to know so much in order to, you know, come and go uh, and, and find the things I want from there, and, and can you help? So they came up with this interface that I'm showing you here, where you could just come in and click through, and you'd get to this page, and here's my li the linear equation page, and so I answer some questions about the problem I'd like to solve. I, I'd like a real single precision routine. I'd like it to solve a general matrix, or maybe I, won't, I have a symmetric matrix. I can just click it off there. Um, 
and then I can tell it I'd like to factor this matrix. And um, then over there on the, the bottom left, there's a question about dependencies and without dependencies. And that's an LA pack thing that says, do I just want the basic routine or do I want all this, all of the LA pack routines that it calls? And so I have to know that. But I can click all these things and then I can go down there on the very right hand side and I and click that button that says C code. And um, there, there pops up my code, my LA PAC code. Um, so as I said, this was a project from 1998. They wrote it in Java. Um, it's only barely still alive because we haven't maintained it along the way. Um, in order to get this picture for the slide, I, I, I had to sort of stumble around and finally figured out that I could still look at it with Safari, but it, it was a little bit incomplete, but it, it was enough to, to show you what they created those years ago. So anyway, they, they wrote this thing. We released it to the numerical computation community. And in the first years, we had 75,000 hits at this site. And we were getting fan mail uh, you know, every week just about from people saying, this has made my life so much easier through navigating through LA PAC. So uh, you know, by, by every measure, it, it was a big success. But you can see you know, it was a very, very basic looking thing. And you had to know some things about LA PAC to, to really navigate through it. So it was sort of a, you know, it, it was a great thing for its time. But we decided that it was time to move on. Okay, and so uh, that's this new solution that we have to the problem is called Lighthouse. And what we are building is a framework to help people to create and maintain and especially to use uh, mathematical software. Okay, so software written by other people. And what we hope with this is that it will be a tool that will help developers who have different backgrounds to get in and find the software that they need to solve their problems. Um, and underneath the covers in LA PAC, you will see um, that, that we have applied expert knowledge, um, various kinds of classifying of numerical software. Um, LA PAC or Lighthouse also provides uh, automated code generation and it gives some help with tuning. So this, this is a work in progress, but, but I'll show you what we have. Okay, I'm here in the desert, so I'll be drinking a lot of water while we go. Okay, all right, so um, LA PAC presently supports that dense linear algebra package I told you about. Um, and LA PAC stands for linear algebra package, um, not a very complicated thing. It, it also has support now for sparse linear algebra. We started with LA PAC, and now we've added in the sparse, the sparse packages, and there are two packages. Um, Lighthouse is most uh, developed for the portable extensible toolkit for scientific computation that's called Petsy, or and we have recently started at adding in Trilinos. These are two packages that provide us um, support for solving linear systems. It also knows about Slepsy, which is a package for sparse eigenvalue problems. So we'll start out by looking at the dense linear algebra case. And Lighthouse handles pretty much or most of, of the functionality of LA PAC. And um, for the dense problems, it, Lighthouse asks the user a series of questions. And the answers to those questions lead the user to exactly one routine. Um, it's exactly run one routine, except for in the case of some eigen solvers and some SVD codes where there's a style, an algorithm that is called multiple relatively robust representations. And in the event that those algorithms are available, then the user is offered both that relatively robust representation and the standard QR uh, um, algorithm, because uh, it turns out the relatively robust algorithm is much faster than QR, but it requires more memory. So the user would then be confronted with both of these with this little bit of advice, so would then have to make the decision about which one that they wanted. Okay, so what's behind the scenes in this dense uh, LA pack uh, lighthouse? Well, it, this is the, these are the very, very first notes as we started to design it. And, and what you can see is, you know, we, we ask a series of questions. What problem do you want to solve? Well, I'd like to solve the linear system AX equal B. Does my matrix have complex numbers in it? 
um, yes or no. When I get down there, no matter which I answered, I have to find out what kind of matrix it was. Was it a symmetric matrix, symmetric, positive, definite, or so forth? And but then once I've answered all the questions um, ab about this, and then that storage question that we looked at for a minute, it will, it will, Lighthouse will lead me down to, to one of those routines at the leaves of this tree. Now, of course, this were just these were just our really basic starting out notes, but we it was the foundation for what we did, and and we implemented this question tree in Django, and here's the result. So you can come in here to the Lighthouse package and it has some introductory stuff and then it offers you down at the bottom there uh, a collection of problems that you can solve. And so if you have a dense matrix, you'll see that you can solve linear systems, eigenvalue problems, compute the SVD, or solve Sylvester matrix equations, uh, all from LA Pack. Um, and also, in the dense case, you're offered a code optimization tool, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. And um, the, uh, on the sparse side, we have, so far, we have Petsy and Slipsy. At the point that we had worked on this interface, we hadn't yet done the Trilinos bit, but it will soon be added in here. Okay. And so then I've chosen that I'd like to solve a linear system, and I come to this page, and the first question that I get asked is, what, what function do I want to execute? And so here I have chosen I'd like to factor a matrix. There are various options about solving linear systems there. And after I've answered this one question, Lighthouse discovers over there on the right-hand side that there are 48 routines that might be relevant to this answer that I've given. Okay, and so then I just keep on answering questions. And by the time I get done answering all the questions, I've told it there aren't any complex numbers in my matrix. My matrix is symmetric. I have a full matrix and I would like a double precision routine. And now Lighthouse has gone down that tree of options and it's settled on a single routine. And, um, I can't see this, but you probably can. Um, the, it, it, there, uh, we can see the first three lines of the description of the routine, but I think over on the right-hand side, you'll see a button that says more. And if you click on it, you can see the full description of the routine. So all of the information that is there available in the LA PAC manual is there, so we don't have that little cut off mid word sort of thing. But suppose that I have discovered some routines that I really like. I can take those routines and I can drag them down into that place, that box that says selected routines. And then once the routines are in there, I can check them off and then I can choose to either see a Fortran template for, for the routine or a C template. And in the picture that's here on the slide, I've chosen a Fortran template. And so then over there on the lower right corner, you see a piece of the code template. I couldn't quite get the whole thing to fit on the slide, but um, it, right there is, is the full code to, to perform the operations that you described in your guided search questions on the left. And um, there's a button down at the bottom that allows you to download the code. And as you download the code, uh, you'll, you'll find that you also get some guidance about how to fill in the many, many um, arguments that, that these LA PAC routines have. So there, there was some help navigating that complicated LA PAC world. For people who have more expertise in LA PAC, we offer this advanced search where you can just come in and just check off all the boxes and then um, you know, request a, a, a routine and, and Lighthouse will go out and find it for you. Um, and we also offer a keyword search. Okay, so um, I mentioned that Lighthouse has an interface to right now one tuning tool. It's called the Build to Order Compiler. And this is a tool that will generate a tuned C code from a MATLAB-like input. So if you have a linear algebra computation that you would like to um, tune, you can go into the Lighthouse interface and type in this MATLAB to describe your computation and out will pop this C code. And um, again, you know, it's a work in progress. This is our, our first tuning tool, but we ultimately plan to include a big variety of tuning tools um, that will fit in the various kind of matrix algebra that we offer. Okay, 
Now on to the sparse linear algebra, and so you'll see that it, it's pretty different than um, uh, what we saw in the dense case. And so as I mentioned, um, we, we have two packages, Pepsi and Carlinos for linear systems and Slepsi for eigensolvers. Today we're just going to look at the linear systems. Um, now, in the sparse linear algebra case, so in the dense case, you saw that we could just answer a whole bunch of questions and then end up at, at one routine. In, in the sparse case, it, it's very different. Um, the, the space of, uh, of solution possibility is really enormous. So a sparse linear system is typically solved by first running a routine that's called a preconditioner. And the idea behind a preconditioner is to try to make the problem easier to solve or to make it more likely that you'll get an accurate answer. Um, and then following the preconditioner, we run a solver like, like we did in the dense case. But Petsy offers more than a thousand preconditioner solver possibilities. Okay, and then when we start looking at it, we discover that choosing the best preconditioner solver pair out of that big pile of possibilities depends on so many things. It depends on the properties of the linear system. It, it can depend on the domain science from which the problem came. It will certainly depend on the parameters that you enter in the, to the solver. And so it, it's, it's really a quandary. If you're somebody who just, even if you're somebody with a lot of expertise, this, this space is just really huge. So when Lighthouse does have a, a search, um, or a, yes, a, an interface to allow you to, to get some recommendations to solve your problem. And so we come here to our page. We're going to choose solve a system of linear equations as the answer to the first question. And then um, this interface looks very different because Unlike the dense case where the, the search was based on that very simple tree, uh, the, the sparse case is a, a much more complicated thing. So it then asks you if you're going to upload your matrix and, and uh, tell Lighthouse what the properties of the matrix are or, uh, or whether you just want Lighthouse to figure out the properties. So we upload our matrix and then we tell um, Lighthouse whether or not we want a sequential or a parallel solution. In the dense case, LA pack was only serial code. Um, in the sparse case, both Petsy and Trilinos offer parallel solutions. So this is, these are all the questions that we have to answer. And we, we type in all our answers. We hit submit. And then out will come a set of routines from which we can choose. And so what's going on when we push that button? Well, what we have is performance-based algorithm classification. And so we use supervised machine learning techniques to um, classify um, uh, problem data based on a set of data where we already know the answers. Okay, so first off, we build a, a training set out of, out of known um, uh, problem types and performance results. And, and then we have to have a testing set, which is again of, of known quantities to, um, to verify that our, our classifier is a good one. Okay, and, and we repeat this class, this uh, testing 10 times in our, in our results. And then the result is that when the user provides a system that they would like, for which they'd like recommendations, Lighthouse will um, classify um, all of these solvers uh, in our set as good or bad for the user system based on what it learned about uh, all of that data that we fed it. Okay, so a little bit mo more of what's behind the scenes. Um, what we had to do was we had to collect vast amounts of timing data for Petsy routines um, for, for many, many preconditioner pairs for many, many matrices. Uh, we used many matrices from the University of Florida sparse matrix collection. That's a good thing to know about if you're somebody who needs sparse matrices to test. And um, then uh, we had to, uh, um, and, and then we, we put in some other matrices that came from various application problems. Okay, and then uh, for all of the matrices that we tested, we had to compute a big number of matrix features. And so this was a, a, a long list, I think, for Petsy. It's 68 features, um, including the matrix norm, what its eigenvalues look like, and, and so forth. And then 
um, we, we said, well, that big set of matrix features that we computed was so expensive um, that we can't afford to compute it for every single matrix that comes along. So what we had to do was go in and test all of those matrix features to figure out which ones um, actually contributed to the solution. And what, what you'll see is it turns out that it, uh, a very small number of features are sufficient. And then we got in with all that data and classified it using a, a big variety of machine learning algorithms. And um, then we had to check the accuracy and the cost of all of these classifications to figure out which ones were best for, for our Lighthouse project. Okay, and so then how it works is the user brings a new linear system to us. Um, we feed the linear system into Lighthouse. <clears throat> Lighthouse uh, computes a, a, a small number of features for the system. That small number of features that we figured out were very important. And because the number is small and we have been able, just by luck, to discard the very expensive features, the cost of computing these features is really quite small. And then the sol this system goes into Lighthouse and out comes, again, this collection of, of, uh, of solvers um, that, that match up well with, with the user's system, okay, based on systems that are in our pile that, that look like the, the user's system. So we wanted to have some idea of how good Lighthouse was, and we have a lot of data on the quality, but I'll just give you this one little slide to, to give you an idea. Um, we, uh, this, this is for some tests that we ran on the Blue Gene Q using Pepsi, and what we wanted to find out was what percentage of the solvers that were actually good for a user's problem were identified as good. And what was interesting to see here was that if we used that full feature set um, with all the really expensive features in it, we got about 88% of the, of the good solvers properly identified. If we cut that number down to eight features, um, we got 87% of the, the um, good solvers identified as good. And if we cut it down to six features, we got 86% of the good solvers identified as good. So this, this was a really interesting result for us because we saw that we could just greatly, greatly reduce the cost of, of identifying good solvers um, without really impacting the, um, the, um, the quality of, of the result. And these results that I presented here were the very best ones that we got across all of those machine learning algorithms that we looked at. And um, they were so, the, and it turned out that the best results came from BayesNet. But it's, it's a different, a different um, machine learning algorithm wins depending on uh, whether we're using Petsy or Trilinos and various other factors. But in this particular case, BayesNet was the winner. Okay, but he, you know, what, one of the things we talked about was, you know, how long are we going to be sitting in the chair waiting for our answers? And so um, this slide, uh, which is a little bit hard to see, but I'll try to interpret it for you. Um, if if you are a brand new user to Petsy and you don't really know anything about it, you will just choose to use the default preconditioner and um, solver. Petsy provides, and it's the ILU preconditioner and the GM res solver. And so what we wanted to find out was how much faster the Lighthouse return routine, the best, the best routine returned by Lighthouse, how much better it was than this default setup. And so um, here are two columns, okay? And so in the first column, uh, we are looking at uh, solvers that were predicted to be good and turned out actually to be good. And then there's a, a smaller, much smaller number of set of solvers that Lighthouse predicts to be good, but they were actually not very good. But what we can see, if we look down here um, at these, uh, the very worst, so I should mention these are serial speedups, single processor speedups. Okay, in the worst case, the routine that, um, uh, the, the speed up of the routine returned by Lighthouse compared to the default was about three quarters. Okay, so it, you know, it, 
it's not good. You, you want the speed up always to be one or better, but you know, in a handful of cases, it was less. Um, but you can see that in the very best case, um, it, it, when the good the good solver was actually good, we might have a solver that's 10,000 times faster than the default. And even in the bad case, we might have a solver that's 1,600 times better than, than the default. Um, the average numbers are probably the, the most informative. So in the, the good that's actually good, uh, the speed up was you know, around 570. Um, in the good but actually bad, it was 18. So even in the, the failure case, uh, Lighthouse helped you with the the salt with the with the result um and so at any rate we, we can see that lighthouse was going to help us not have to sit sit in the chair quite as long to to get our answers okay so um if any of you has systems um that you'd like us to check out with lighthouse we'd be very very happy to have those um and uh so i will invite you to send them our way and there's just one other little topic that I'll, I'll have a look at bef before we close. And um, that one of the things that we really cared about with Lighthouse was making something that was easy for the user. Because we went through a whole bunch of examples of taxonomies that really weren't easy to use at all. And so um, we used a technique um, from human-computer interaction called thinking aloud evaluation. And how this works is, um, I have a system. I invite um, somebody um, to come, a user to come and try my system. So the user comes and sits down in front of the screen, and I say, um, see if you can find a routine to solve a linear system when the coefficient matrix is symmetric. And so the user starts to work with Lighthouse, and the user speaks aloud everything that they're thinking as they go. And um, this turns out to be a really, really powerful technique for um, discovering usability problems in routines and, or in, um, in systems. And so in our first thinking aloud evaluation uh, of Lighthouse, we, we stumbled across some kind of funny things. And so th there was a keyword search, and somebody who knew some things tried to type Gaussian elimination in, and the keyword search changed it to Russian elimination. And so what we did after that was we went out to some authors of linear algebra textbooks and got their the indices from their textbooks and and educated our keyword search using those uh, book indices and 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 the results been quite good. Um, another thing that they told us was um, and again I'm sorry I should have said that this was the dense problem so they were looking at that first interface that we walked through um, and it had that advanced search that we looked at and. And pretty much all the users said that they thought the advanced search was easier to use than the guided search, even ones who didn't have a lot of expertise. So that was sort of interesting. And they, they discovered other things like, you know, annoyance and having to scroll down to find buttons and, um, you know, other complications that, you know, the readme files were too long. But we learned lots and lots of things uh, uh, about usability issues that we were able to get in and fix. So this was a nice evaluation. So anyway, I hope that I've managed to convey to you some of the difficulties with the mathematical software world and have introduced you to one possible solution to some of them. I need to acknowledge uh, the funding that we've had for this work from the Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation. And if you are interested in um, having a look at Lighthouse, uh, there is its URL. And um, it, it turns out that the setting up an account doesn't work right now so you but you can try it out as a guest and get in and romp around and i'm excited to say that we just had a a, a long paper or a, a, a pretty substantial paper uh, accepted to the siam journal on scientific computing and um so if you want to see lots of details um i can point you to there and i'm happy to send you a copy um if you'd like to see it before it comes out okay and so i i think i will uh, Say thank you, and, and that's what I have today.